Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the great things that you have done and the greater things that you will do. We bless the name of the Lord. We lift up the name of the Lord up high. Family and friends, today is the first Wednesday of our meeting together. As we wait for the rest of the families, please invite somebody. Share the message of the Lord on your page. Today, the Lord will reveal something to you that will be a blessing. That will be a blessing. That will be a blessing. Yes, Lord. So we are waiting. We are waiting for the rest of the families to join in. And we will fellowship together. Remember, the word of the Lord is always to strengthen you and I. The word of the Lord is always to open our eyes. The word of the Lord is always there for us to meditate on it in times of troubles, in times of trials and tribulations, in times of, of, of need. So as we wait for the rest of the family, please share the broadcast on your live page so somebody else can be blessed. Hallelujah. Today the Lord will open somebody else's eyes. Today the Lord is going to bless you. Today the Lord is going to strengthen you. Today God himself will speak to your heart. Hallelujah. So please share the broadcast. In two minutes, we're going to be starting. And we will hear from God. In two minutes. Sorry we were late. We were trying to figure out how to, you know, send this broadcast live to you wherever you are. God bless you for tuning in. God bless you. For, for, for staying with us. We will pray also. Once this broadcast is done, we will stand on some scriptures and we will pray. And the Lord will answer our prayers. Amen. Amen. The word that is coming to you today says, listen. 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 Obey. Obey. And then be saved. Hallelujah. The word that is coming to you today says, listen, obey, and be saved. It's three, two instructions, and then it produces one result. Two instructions that will produce one great result in your life. Hallelujah. Listen. Obey and be saved. Hallelujah. <laughs> we live in a days where we all need to be saved. We live in a days where we all need the, the word of God in our lives. We live in a days where sicknesses, diseases, infirmities, are all over the place. It's like when you wake up, all you hear is, bad news. But in the midst of the bad news, God is still doing amazing things. Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. In the midst of the storm, God is still doing amazing things. In the midst of the storm, God is still shaping the lives of his people. He's building the lives of his people and he's bringing them to a place where they will be filled with wisdom, with gratitude and they will have a life of faith. Hallelujah. 
So please share the broadcast before we even move on. Share it on your page. Be a blessing to somebody. Today we're just going to speak. We're going to talk to each other. We're going to, to, to have a fellowship together. We're going to be enlightened. We are going to, to, to have our eyes opened. Especially in times like this. If your spiritual eye is not open, you will fall for anything. Because you'll be walking in this world like a blind man who cannot see. And every hole that is ahead of you and every stumbling block and every net the devil will cast for your soul, if you are not careful, it will catch you on our words. So please share the broadcast. Maybe this message you have heard it before and it might not even uh, move you like it's supposed to. But maybe somebody, a friend of yours, on Facebook, a family member who is going through anxiety, attacks, and depression, a family member who don't even know where to start his life from, might benefit from you sharing it. So please share. In the next two minutes, we will be beginning. But first, we are going to pray. We pray that the Lord will touch your heart. We pray that the Lord himself will give you understanding. We pray that the Lord himself will give you wisdom. We pray that the Lord will prepare your heart, my dear brother, my dear sister. We pray that his unction, his grace, his wisdom will come upon you right now. That when you receive this word, you will be able to hold on to it. In a season like this, where people are weary, people are tired. In a season like this where people are sick, people are confused, your eyes will be opened, your understanding will be sharpened, and you will be able to lean on the word of the Lord, stand on the promises, and make it to the end. May the Lord bless you even as you have decided to stay and listen to this message. May the Lord cause his face to shine on you. As Moses said, let Reuben never die and let his people never be few. I declare these blessings upon your life wherever you are that you will not die and your people will not be few. You will not die. Your family will not die. Your children will not die. Your siblings will not die. Your parents will not die. No storm will be able to take them from the top of the sea and bring them and sink them to the bottom of the ocean. You will arrive at your destination and you will give the glory to God. May you never die. May you live to fulfill the purpose for which God created you. May you be amongst the people in the land of the living to say, oh, give thanks to the Lord for his good. For his mercies has endured forever. Today, the sure mercies of God will speak for you at the, at, the, at the sound of my voice. If you are hearing me right now, the sure mercies of God will speak for you. His grace will be sufficient. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Please share the broadcast as we begin to dive in to the word of the Lord. As we begin to dive into the word of the Lord. I bring you greetings from God and once again, Happy New Year to you all. Today is the first Wednesday of this Wednesday's Word of Wisdom. Wednesday Word of Wisdom. And we are taking our scriptures from Acts chapter 27. Acts chapter 27. Remember, the title of the message is Listen, Obey, and Be Saved. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 27. When it was decided that we would sail to Italy, Paul and some other prisoners were handed over to the centurion named Julius, who belonged to the imperial regiment. Watch this. Paul 
was captured and he became a prisoner. Why? Because Paul was doing his work and he was preaching the gospel. And the people did not like the message that Paul was preaching. So there was an uproar in Jerusalem. There was massive people who came against Paul and they arrested him. And the plan was even to kill Paul. But the Bible say one of the commanders heard it and he went there. And the people became calm and they handed Paul to the authorities. So now Paul became a prisoner. He became a prisoner. And then the plans was made for Paul to be transported to Rome to face his judgment over there. Watch this. In the eyes of the people, they were thinking that they had captured Paul because he was their prisoner right now. But in the eyes of God, Paul was not a prisoner to the people, but Paul was a prisoner to God. He was arrested by the Spirit of the Lord to do the work of the Lord. So Paul was on a mission for God. Hallelujah, somebody. Today, you might be in a condition, you might be in a situation where everybody will think that you've been captured. Oh, you are in this situation and you are about to die because um, um, you are affected in a way and, 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 and there is nothing you can do about it. But it is all God's plan to bring glory to the kingdom of God. It is all God's plan to build your faith. It is all God's plan to, 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 to release you in the right time. So all nations will say, assuredly, the Lord is with this person. Hallelujah. So Paul, in the eyes of the people, he was a prisoner. But he wasn't a prisoner to the people, even though it seemed like, that, it, like it. But he was a prisoner to the Lord. He was a man on a mission somewhere that was already revealed to Paul two years ahead of time. Two years. Two years. Remember this number of years. The Spirit of the Lord is giving a revelation right now. Two years ahead of time. Jesus had spoken to Paul and he had told Paul that you will bear witness of me in Rome. Watch this. Huh. So let's, you know, we're going to sk skip some verses and then we can be quick because we don't have much time and I don't want to keep you all night. But when you have a chance, read Acts chapter 27 and you will understand the whole story. So they made a plan to transport Paul from, from Jerusalem to Rome. Now watch this, verse 3 to 9. The next day, you know, at this point, they had entered into a boat, a ship, and they had sailed. But they had come across a lot of um, storms, and, 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 and they had made it through Macedonia and Thessalonica. But chapter 3, verse 3 says, The next day we landed on Sidon, and Julius, in kindness to Paul, allowed him to go to his friends so they might provide for his needs. In this moment, even though Paul was a prisoner, the Bible say he had favor. The Lord had given Paul favor in the sight of Julius, the centurion, the one, who, the commander who was watching over the prisoners in the ship. So the commander, being that Paul had found favor in his sight, allowed Paul to be able to move around freely in the ship. He wasn't bound. He was able to move to his friends so the friends could provide the very things that Paul needed. Let's read chapter 4, uh, verse 4. From there, we put out to sea again and passed to Lee of Cyprus because the winds were against us. Watch this. All this while, from Macedonia to Thessalonica, uh, Sidon and all this, places that the ship was sailing across, there was a storm. Something was going on. They were going through, you know, moments where it looked like they were about to die. Now watch this. <laughs> Verse 5 says, When we had sailed across the open sea of the coast of Sis 
Cilicia and Pamphylia, we landed at Myra in Lycia. There, the centurion found a Alexandrian ship sailing for Italy and put us on board. So now they had come to a place and they had landed. And they didn't want to continue with the same ship that they were in to Italy. So they transported Paul and the rest of the prisoners. And even the, 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 the soldiers and the commanders in the ship into the ship of the Alexandrian that was going to Italy. There was a transfer. And then being so, they could continue their way to Rome. We made slow headway for many days and had difficulties arriving off needles. When the wind did not allow us to hold our course, we sailed to Lee of Crete, opposite Salmone. We moved along the coast with difficulty and came to a place called Fair Heavens near the town of Lasea. So all this time, Paul is in the ship with other prisoners, as a prisoner himself, with ship captains who are well skilled and everything. Look at all these nations that they had sailed across. But everywhere they reached, there was a storm. The sea was rising against them. Things were not working the way they had planned. And they were facing difficulties. We live in a generation, we live in an age, we live in a season where when you look to the left, to the right, to the front, to the back, it looks like help is not coming from nowhere. It looks like nothing good is coming from anywhere. Every radio station or TV station or social media post you see, it's all about storm, storm, storm. This one is dying. There is a disease here. There is an outbreak here. There is this, there is that. And everybody is panicking. Everybody is being attacked. Everybody is going through anxiety, depression, heart attacks, and, 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 and stuff like that. But all these things that is going on, my brother, it is still not stopping the move of God. God still has an agenda. God is still God. He is still on the throne. He is still working his agenda out. Heaven has work to do. And it will get done. Hallelujah, somebody. Say, heaven's work will get done. And I am included in heaven's agenda. So I will not die. Hallelujah, somebody. Remember, Paul is a prisoner in the ship. Today you might be a prisoner with some sickness. You might be a prisoner with some disease. You might be a prisoner to some financial crisis because of everything that is going on and the economy is crashing. You are losing your jobs. You might lose the, your, your relationship or you are losing everything around you. Your prison in this moment might be far different than the prison that Paul found himself. The storms of this age might be far different than the days of Paul in that ship. But no storm is far greater than the spirit of the living God. There is no storm that can take God by surprise. There is no storm that God cannot handle. The Bible said the disciples were in the, in the ship with Jesus and Jesus was far asleep at the bottom of the boat. And the storm was raging and Peter, being the ship captain and, and knowing how to captain a boat, could not even handle the, 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 the boat. They tried all they can. They cried, they screamed, they yelled. But the Bible said they could not handle it. So they reached down. They remembered. After they had tried with all their strength, they remembered that, hold on a minute. We are not alone by ourselves. There is somebody who is with us, who has answers to everything in the world. Even though he's not standing next to us, let us find him. So they break down the, 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 the beneath the boat and they called on Jesus. They said, Master, Master, we are sinking and you are sleeping. Sometimes it might look like Jesus is sleeping on you. 
No, he's not sleeping. He's waiting upon you to call out. So he will respond to you and show you that all power in heaven and all power on earth has been given unto him. Tonight, before you go to sleep, whatever you are doing, I encourage you that you will reach beneath your boat. You will dig deeper in prayers and you will cry out to Jesus. You will cry out to Yeshua HaMashiach in times and seasons like this. In these stormy days, you will call out and say, Master, Master, we are sinking. What are we going to do? And I promise you this. He that has power over everything, he that has overcome the world, he that has overcome every principality and every demonic incantations and gatherings, he will come up your boat. He will come into your household. And he will say to the storms of your life, Hush! And the storms will calm down. And you will say, Who is this? Who is able to speak? And even the waves obey him. Hallelujah. Now let's go on to verse 10. Acts chapter 27, verse 10 to 12. I had to open somebody else's eyes. This is not the first time people had gone through storms. This is not the second time. This will not be the last. Until the day Christ comes, the world will be filled with storms and, 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 and trials and tribulations. Christians are praying that all these things have to stop. And I came here to tell you that if that prayer gets answered, that all these storms stop, then the Bible will be a liar. For Jesus said it before he left the world. He said, Watch this. There will be rumors of wars. There will be sickness and diseases. There will be people killing each other. Nations rising up against each other. But watch this. I have overcome it. All these things are signs to prove to you that I am coming. So don't pray that every storm in the world should stop. But rather pray that the overcoming spirit of Christ will overcome your storm for you. Hallelujah. May God open your eyes tonight as we fellowship together so you will know how to channel your prayer point and your prayer topics. Glory be to God. So let's see what verse 10 says. Verse 9, uh, verse 9 to 12. Now they had landed somewhere that they could relax a little bit. They had landed somewhere that they could wait for all the storm. To, to, to go before they would travel again. But now watch this. Much time had been lost. Verse 9. Acts chapter 27 verse 9. Much time had been lost and sailing had already become dangerous because by now it was after the day of atonement. So Paul warned them. Watch this. Because they were traveling to Rome they had a set day they wanted to arrive. They had a time in mind that even in the midst of the storm, we have to come out and get to Rome. For these prisoners are supposed to be in Rome. For we also are supposed to be in Rome. But the Bible said because of the storms and everything that was going on, they had already lost so much time. How many times you were thinking you, in 2020 you were supposed to do something and you could not do it? In 2021, you had a, a resolution, plans, and ideas, and you could not achieve it because of everything that was going on. Hallelujah. Now, there comes 2022. And uh, um, the Lord has spoken to you again. And you are hoping that this year will be a great year for you. You are hoping that this year God will turn things around. Even they came out with solutions that we have this medication and that medication and this and this and that. And if everybody take it and whatever, everything, the storm will calm down. Yet people are taking it and even the ones that are taking it are still even catching the same sickness. The world is confused in this moment. In this very moment, one plus one is not becoming two. But it's becoming a hundred. And nobody can explain to us why one plus one is a hundred. Hallelujah, somebody. Watch this. So they had lost so much time. The sea had become dangerous. 
And now, Paul warned them. What was the warning that Paul gave to them? Acts chapter 27 verse 10. Paul said to them, Men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to the ship and cargo and to our own lives. This. In this moment, the word of knowledge came to Paul. <laughs> ah, where there is no wisdom or knowledge, the people perish. In this moment, the spirit of prophecy came upon Paul and he prophesied to the leaders of the ship, the leaders of the voyage, the commanders. He said to them, listen people, I can see that this voyage, this travel and this journey is going to be disastrous and it's going to bring great loss to this ship and cargo and it's going to affect our lives. Also, verse 11, it says, but the centurion, instead of listening to Paul or what Paul was saying, follow the advice of the pilot and the owner of the ship. Watch this. The centurion knew that the spirit of God is upon Paul. The centurion knew that Paul could see into the future. The centurion knew that what Paul is saying is true. Today, I come here to, to, to encourage somebody. This is not the time you will jump ship. Or you will run away from the man of God that has spoken to you under the unction of God. For that man of God, wherever you attend church, wherever you go, wherever you, are, you fellowship, that man of God is on a mission for God. That man of God is a prisoner to God. And God is taking him somewhere. And if only you can stay with him, if only you can walk with him, if only you can listen, obey, you shall be saved. Watch. As this story develops. Watch this. So Paul, being a prophet of God, gave that instruction. But the Bible say, the centurion, the, 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 the commander, listened to the instructions and to the voices of the pilot, the ship captain, and the owner of the ship. Now let me tell you, there is an agenda for the pilot or the ship captain. There is an agenda for the, the owner of the ship. What is the agenda? The owner of the ship probably was thinking, if we sit here and wait, we are going to lose money. Oh, somebody you don't know. Sometimes you listen to advice from wrong people. Sometimes you listen to the wrong spirit. Sometimes you listen to advice from people who have other motives and are driven by such motives. Those motives that are not of God. Hallelujah, somebody. May God open our eyes. May God give us the discernment of spirit. So when somebody speaks to us, we can discern and know, is this word coming from the Lord or is coming from familiar spirit? <laughs> the ship captain didn't want to waste time because maybe he's been paid by the hour. Maybe he's listening to his boss, the owner of the ship. And the owner of the ship wants to arrive in Rome by transporting these prisoners. So he said, no, 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 Paul. We are not going to listen to you and wait. We will carry on. We will sail through. Because he has bills to pay. He has family to take care of. Today, who is advising you? Hallelujah, somebody. So verse 12 says, since the harbor was unsuitable to winter in, the majority decided that they should sail on, hoping to reach Phoenix and winter there. This was a harbor in Crete, facing both southwest and northwest. Now watch this. Even the people in the ship also, when they consulted them, they said, we don't want to winter here. We don't want to stay here. This place looks like it's not, it's not good for us. Sometimes you might be thinking that where you are standing, it's not good for you. Sometimes you might be thinking that where God has placed you, it's not good for you. Sometimes you might be thinking that, ah, there is a better place somewhere. Let me go try it. Sometimes you might be thinking that, no, 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 no. Let me listen to the other voice that is speaking. 
Watch this. In this season, if you don't have discernment of spirit, you will die before your time. For everybody is speaking. Everybody is talking. From government all the way to security people. All the way to even prisoners. Everybody got a word. Everybody knows something. Everybody has heard something. The devil is speaking through some people to propagate his agenda. And the Lord is speaking through some people, some chosen people. So he can lead the flock. So Jesus can shepherd his people in this time of storm so they can arrive alive. Not arrive dead. Hallelujah. So the people also said, we want to go. We don't want to stay here. We want to sail. For this place is not even good for us. Maybe when we get to the next stop, it will be a good place. Now watch this. Verse 13. Verse 13. Before we read verse 13, I want you to know that in the realms of the supernatural, logic cannot be taken into equation. If you always want to be logical, then you cannot live in the realms of the supernatural. You cannot obey the spirit of the Lord because sometimes God would give you instructions that seem and look foolish to everybody else. But I dare you to be foolish enough to follow the instructions of God all the way to the end. And in the end, you will be giving glory to God. For the Bible say, He takes the foolish things of the world and he uses it to confound the wise. He uses it to make the wise people. The people we think they are wise. God takes the foolish things of the world. And he uses it to make the people who proclaim that they are wise. To look foolish. Wisdom is only hidden in God. If you are seeking for wisdom. The Bible says ask the Lord. For he will give it to you without a grudge. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. So in this season, you and I tell somebody, we will live in the supernatural. We will abide in the presence of God. We will walk by the Spirit. And we will win by the Spirit. But by your strength shall no man prevail. You cannot prevail in these times and in this season with your strength. You cannot prevail in this demonic age with your strength. And one thing I know, my Bible say, the righteous shall be bold as lion. Oh, it's time for somebody to be bold. It's time for somebody to declare that Jesus is Lord. It's time for somebody to say, oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, as for us, we will not bow down to any other God. We will stand for Jesus. And even if Jesus will not save us, it will be better to die for Jesus than to die for the devil. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. From today, somebody will begin to walk in the supernatural. From today, somebody will begin to ascend in the realms of the spirit. From today, somebody's spiritual eye will begin to open. And you will begin to listen to, to the right source, from the right source of instructions. Remember, the message says, listen, obey, and be saved. So verse 13 says, Now, they had decided to sail, and they had moved from the place where Paul told them to wait. So now they are going again. When the gentle south wind began to blow, they saw the opportunity. So they weighed the anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. Watch this. The devil has a way of always presenting something to you to make you think that now it's all good. The Bible says, they saw a gentle wind blowing. So they said, oh, this wind is good. This wind is, is, is gentle enough to push the ship. 
towards our destination. This wind can lead us to the place that we are going. Today, may you never look at things with your physical eyes. I pray that you will not be deceived by any lies of the devil. For the Bible calls the devil the father of all lies. He will present a situation to you that will make you think, this is better than what I was hearing from the Lord. So when they saw that little gentle wind, Probably they said, listen to that foolish Paul telling us to remain here. Look how nice this gentle wind is blowing. This one, it will sail us through. So they disregarded the prophet who was placed in the midst of them. Sometimes the prophet might not look like a prophet to you because he looked like a prisoner in your eyes. He looked like he's in the same boat as you are in. And he is helpless. My God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Do not be deceived. Do not be dismayed. For who the Lord has called will always be backed by the power of God. And as the Lord is backing him up, if you stay with him, if you sail with him, if you run with him, if you walk with him, that umbrella, that sailing, that, that, that covering will cover you also. Because whenever there is a move of God, there are casualties. When God is moving, those who don't move along with God, they die. In the case of Noah, those who moved with Noah, they were in the ship. The ship did not make sense in the beginning of building. All the way when the door was shut, people were still partying around. Telling Noah, oh, you fool. You have locked yourself up in that ship. In that instance, even if there was an unbeliever who begged Noah to enter into the ship, the ark with Noah, he would have been saved because there was no way God was going to wreck the ark because the righteous man, Noah, was in the ark. The righteous Jesus was in the boat. Hallelujah, somebody. So watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 13. Yes, they moved. Now, verse 14 says, Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called the Northeaster swept down from the island. The ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind. So we gave way to it and were driven along. Did Paul not tell them to wait? Did Paul not tell them to listen? Did Paul not warn them? Because they saw the little gentle breeze, they decided to sail. And now they are caught up in a hurricane, in a bigger storm. So they were helpless to the point all they could do is to just leave everything hopelessly and let the wind just push them to whatever direction. Hallelujah. They were driven along by whatever direction the hurricane was going. Verse 16 says, As we passed through the lee of the small in the island called Quada, Cauda, we were hardly able to make the lifeboat secure. So the men hoisted it aboard. Then they passed ropes under the ship itself to hold it together. Because they were afraid they would run aground on the sandbars of Cyrus, they lowered the anchor and let the ship be driven along. We took such violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. The storm was so much that they started throwing cargo their belongings, their food, and everything. Did Paul not say that if we are not careful, we will lose the ship, we will lose our belongings, we will lose a lot if we go forward. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle boat with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope 
of being saved. <laughs> God is God. The Bible says, let God be God and all men be liars. Paul was not speaking and warning them because Paul felt like staying in that place. But Paul knew the dangers ahead. Paul knew that things was not going to be good. But let's see in verse 21. Like I told you, when the Spirit of God is upon somebody, no matter how much, even things get worse. God will still provide answers and directions. Even in the midst of disobedience and fear and anxiety and depression. Because of one person in the boat that the name of the Lord is upon, God will still work it out. Today I pray that the Spirit of the Lord is upon your shepherd. Today I pray that the Spirit of the Lord is upon your prophet. Today I pray that wherever you worship, the Spirit of the Lord is in that sanctuary. That you and everybody will receive divine instructions. I didn't say emotional instructions, but divine instructions that will lead you to safety. May you never lose your hope. May you never become hopeless. May you never lose your hope. May you lift up your eyes and always look up to Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. So verse 21. After they had gone along with a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sell from Crete. Then you would have spared yourself this damage and loss. But now... I urge you to keep up your courage <laughs> because not one of you will be lost. That is verse 22. He said, but now I urge you to keep your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of the Lord, God, to whom I belong, whom did Paul say he belonged? He belonged to God. Whom did Paul say appeared unto him? The angel of the Lord, not the media, not social media, not the news outlet, but an angel of the Lord appeared unto Paul and said, what did the angel say? He said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand strong before Caesar. And God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep your courage, men. For I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. Do I need to explain this? Paul came again in verse 22. First, he had warned them not to sail. They did. And now they are facing a difficult time, a hopeless moment. Where they knew that everybody was going to die. But the unction, the spirit of the Lord came on the prophet again. This time around, let me not even use Apostle Paul. Let me use Prophet Paul. Because he was prophesying. He was speaking. He was seeing into the realms of the spirit. He was walking in the supernatural. Not looking at the raging storms of the sea. Hallelujah. Glory belong to God. So Paul said to them, why did you not listen, people? I told you, but you will not listen. I said this before we left, but you will not listen. You decided to listen to the masses. Watch this. The people in the Titanic ship, the, 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 the old Titanic ship that sank, the owners of the ship, because they wanted to make history, they pressured the ship captain to speed up the ship and arrive earlier. Why? Because when they arrived early, Titanic was the biggest ship. So, they will be able to say, we made history. We built the biggest ship 
yet arrived earlier than even smaller ships. You see, sometimes people have agenda. Sometimes, like I said earlier, people have ulterior motive. So they will put pressure on you to move away from the directions, from what you know that it works and it has been working. The grace is sufficient. The grace of Jesus is working. The grace is protecting his people. Oh yes, his mercy is endured forever. And you shall not die. Again I say, may you never die and may your people never be few. I invoke the blessings of, 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 of Jacob and the blessings of Moses. The same blessings Moses pronounced on the people. The 12 tribes of, 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 of Israel. I invoke that blessings upon you today. And if only you will listen to God, you will not die. They put pressure on the ship captain of the Titanic. The pressure was so high, he could not withstand it. So he yielded and he put the ship on the maximum speed. And what happened? They died. They did not make it alive. Only a few survived. To tell the story. Only a few survived to tell the story. Today, you shall be among the few that will survive and thrive. So many years to come, you will tell your children and your children's children the great pandemic of 2020, 2021, 2022. And it is not stopping yet, people of God. It is not stopping yet, for the time is not due. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. In 2020, when summertime came and everything slowed down, I stood in the midst of the lost people and I told them, don't go fooling around. Don't go misbehaving. Don't go turning away from God, for this will rise again. Everybody was looking at my face like, what is he talking about? Then in 2021, it rose again. New Year's Eve. Even before New Year's Eve, when everybody was getting too excited that medications are here and vaccines are here and everything, when it first came, I spoke to the people of God again and I told them, these vaccines, I am not against it, I am not for it. I won't speak much about it. But one thing I know, it will not be the answer because this will surely rise again. It is not stopping now. It, the devil has an agenda and he will push until he has fulfilled his target. It is not stopping now, people of God. But God will prevail. Now they say they have another variant not Omicron. There is another one rising up from somewhere. Soon you will hear much noise about it. May God protect his people. May God watch over his people. May God put you in a hedge of protection that no disease, no sickness, no infirmity will come near you. Now, Acts chapter 27, we continue. Verse 27. Acts chapter 27, verse 27. On the 14th day, on, a, on the 14th night, we were still being driven across the Adric Sea. When about midnight, the sailors sensed they were approaching land. They took soundings and found that the water was 120 feet deep. A short time later, they took soundings again and found that it was 90 feet deep. Fearing that they would be dashed against the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. In an attempt to escape from the ship, the sailors let the lifeboat down into the sea, pretending they were going to lower some anchors from the bow. Then Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, Unless this man stay with the ship, you cannot be saved. So the soldiers cut off the ropes and held the lifeboat and let it drift away. You see, 
when things became difficult and they realized that they were getting close a little bit, they decided to let down the lifeboat in the ship so they can escape. Meaning they were going to escape and maybe leave the prisoners. They were going to run away and leave Paul and the rest of them. The helpless people, the people who did not have help, leave them in the, in the, in the sea, in the boat. But Paul said to them, yes, you might try to run away. You might try to flee. You might feel that you have the power to the lifeboat to go. But I say this to you. Until you stay here with us, you will not make it. You will die. Why? Because the unction, the grace, the covering on Paul was what brought them to where they are. I pray that you understand spiritual things. People of God, be faithful to your men of God. Wherever you worship, be faithful. As long as you know that the leader is of God and you have discerned to know that the Spirit of God is upon him, stay faithful and loyal and watch what the Lord would do. Watch what the Lord would do. So, verse 33 says, just before dawn, Paul urged them all not to, uh, all to eat. For the last 14 days, he said, You have been in constant suspense and have gone without food. You haven't eaten anything. Now, I urge you to take some food. You need it to survive. Not one of you will lose a single hair from your head. After he said this, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them all. Then he broke it and he began to eat. They were all encouraged and ate some food themselves. All together were 276 of us on board. When they had eaten as much as they wanted, they lightened the ship by throwing the grain into the sea. Watch. What did Paul do? He said to them, he prophesied to them, and I prophesied to you today. That it don't matter what storm you are going through. You will make it out. You will make it out to your destination. You will arrive alive. Paul said, listen, you have not eaten for so long. You have been starving yourself because you are in suspense. You are afraid. Paul fed them physically. Whilst he was feeding them spiritually. <laughs> I wish I had time to dig deeper into things so you will understand. He did not only preach, but he took the food that they were rejecting, the food that they were afraid to eat. He fed them physically because if you don't eat, you can become weak and you can, you know, anxiety and, and starving and, and everything going against your body can make you make foolish decisions. In our case, anxiety and depression can weaken your immune system and you might lose your life when you were not supposed to. Be cheerful. Be cheerful, people of God. Celebrate the goodness of the Lord and look up to Jesus. Keep giving thanks and praise. Keep praising him. Keep blessing his holiness. Keep worshiping. Keep lifting up the name Jesus. And you will be charged up with an energy. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. The fire of God. It will lighten you up. And you will overcome every disease and every infirmity. So Paul took them food in the ship. The Bible says he gave thanks to God. In this very moment, inside of the ship with unbelievers had turned into a church. A church that was partaking in communion. A church that was doing the last supper. A church that was communing with God. A church that was worshiping. A church that was listening to the leader. Pray to God for instructions. Hallelujah. Today, may your ship that is going through the storm be turned into a church. Into a praying church. 
into a communion church, into a spiritual church. If we all we will go down on our knees, if every church of God will go down on their knees and cry out and break communion and fellowship together, even in the midst of the storm, Jesus will prevail. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Let's see. So when daylight came, they did not recognize the land, but they saw a bay with a sandy beach where they decided to run the ship aground if they could. Cutting loose the anchor, they left them in the sea and at the same time untied the ropes that held the rudders. Then they hoisted the full sail to the wind and made for the beach. But the ship stuck at the sandbar and ran aground. Did Paul not say, nevertheless, we are going to run aground? He said we will be saved. We will, when you read uh, Acts chapter 27, verse 26, he said, uh, verse, uh, verse, let's read from verse 25. He said, so keep your courage, man, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some sand, on some island. He told them earlier, before even them running aground in the sand. Don't play with prophecies, people of God. Don't play with prophecies. In verse 26, he told them, and now going forward, as they hoisted and, 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 and moved towards the beach, uh, verse 41 says, but the ship st struck a sandbar and ran aground. The bow stuck fast and would not move, and the stand was broken into pieces by the pounding of the tough. So they ran aground. Prophecy was fulfilled. The word of God never falls to the ground. It will fulfill the purpose for which it was spoken. Hold on to what the word of God has said concerning your life. What did your prophet told you or tell you on the crossover service? Before you entered into 2022, did the word of God tell you that you will all die? Or he said, you will live. It don't matter where you attend a church. Go back and remember what your leader said to you. Now, when you remember it, begin to follow instructions. So you will make it. Now, watch this. Verse 42 says, the soldiers plan to kill the prisoners to prevent any of them from swimming and escaping. Watch. This man of God, Paul, had led them to a ground, had led them to safety by the word of knowledge, by the spirit of the living God, by wisdom, by prophecy. By obeying instructions from his God. He said the angel appeared to him. And the angel said, Paul, because of you. Because you have to testify in Rome. Because of the assignment on your life. Because of the mission that you are on. I, the Lord, will protect you. Even all the people around you. Now that God has protected them. Their, their, their demonic mind. Their evil agenda still thinking in their flesh that Paul is a prisoner. So no, let's kill the prisoners so none of them can escape. So at least we can tell the Romans, oh yes, the prisoners, we kill them. So they are faced judgment. Verse 43 says, but the centurion wanted to spare Paul's life and kept them from carrying out their plan. He ordered those who could swim to jump overboard first and get to land. The rest were to get there on planks or on other pieces of the ship. In this way, everyone reached safety. Hallelujah. Every one of them. I promise you this, people of God. If the centurion had kept quiet in that moment, 
they would have never been able to swim to shore. They would have, they, they, they would have invoked the, 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 the wrath of God. And yes, they would have swam, but they would have never made it to the shore. But the centurion, being a wise man, a little wise, said, let's leave this prisoner of God alone. Let us not kill them. Now, all of you are going to swim. Those who won't know how to swim, swim. Those who will take pieces of food to lay on and get to your destination, get. <coughs> but we are all going. The Bible says, all of them made it to shore. Today, I say this to the world. I say this to our leaders. I say this to all nations. If they will let the people of God be free. If they will, ask, they will stop the attacks on the saints. If they will stop destroying and targeting the people of God. If they will stop sitting and saying, let's see what they are going to do. We all will make it. The storm will stop. And we will make it. But if they keep targeting the people of God. And if they keep coming against the people of God. The children, the sons and daughters of Zion. Watch this. They will be surprised. That all their mechanisms will fail. And the people of God will still prevail. They will lay on the planks and the wooden board to swim to the coast and they will not make it. But the prisoners, <laughs> I'm speaking wisdom here and I hope you understand. The prisoners, the so-called saints who are becoming prisoners and don't even know how to swim and don't have the cushion and don't have the wooden planks to lay on. They will make it to the shore by the Spirit of the Lord. Oh yes, they will go through whilst they swim. But they will go through it with God. Just as they went through all the storms and got to where they were. And they will see in the, the beach, the island. The saint will see the island. The saint will see the island. You too will see the island. Your church will see the island. Your children will see the island. Oh, your husbands and your wives will see the island. Your family will see the island. Your church family will make it to the island. Stay underneath the umbrella of God. And you will make it. The word says, listen, obey, and be saved. Listen, obey, and be saved. In Acts chapter 23, verse 11. Before they even arrested Paul. And he became a prisoner. In Acts chapter 23, verse 11. Jesus had told Paul. That you will witness. To the people of Rome. About me. You will bear witness of me, Jesus. To the people of Rome. So, if Jesus had told Paul this, two years before he was arrested, two years before he was put in the boat, two years before they were facing the storm, then brothers, sisters, there was no storm in the world that was going to take Paul down. There was no storm in the world that was going to stop Paul. There was no storm in the world. The sea could have risen up the skies and towards the ship and they will still make it to Rome because Jesus says so. Not because men say so. Because Jesus says so. Two years before this happened, Paul was given the mandate, the assignment. Paul was charged to bear witness of Christ in Rome. And them arresting Paul and trying to take him to Rome to, to, to go stand judgment and whatever it is was a part of God's plan. 
today, whatever you are going through, it's a part of God's plan. Don't lose your hope in God. Don't lose your faith in God. Don't jump ship. Stay in the ship. Ride with the ship. And watch what the Lord will do. Because you came, your family shall be saved. Because you came, your loved ones shall be saved. Because you stayed, your, 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 your husbands and your wives and your children will be saved. Because you came, the Lord will shut the door of the ark in the face of the storm. And you will be preserved. Because you came, your people will sing hallelujah. They will be in the land of the living. And they will not die because you came because you came. In the end, Paul was able to mold the people of God not only in, with life of faith, but he molded them also of wisdom and gratitude. The people became grateful. The people were overjoyed and the people were happy how the Lord saved them. In the end, Paul got to Rome. And he buried or bore witness to Christ. To the people of Rome. He testified that Jesus is Lord. Today, you and I, all of you online, we will testify that Jesus is Lord. We will testify. As I'm bringing this message to an end. I want to open your eyes. In these days that we live in, the only thing that you can prevail with is prayer. It's prayer. So when you go down on your knees, the word of the Lord that came to us, New Year's Eve, said, Let Reuben never die. Let Reuben never die. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 12. Moses said, no, Deuteronomy chapter 33. Moses said, let Reuben never die, not let his people be few. Today I speak these words over your life. Even in the days of, 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 of subtraction. When I say subtraction, where people are dying left and right. I speak this word of protection. Word of multiplication. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 6. May you live and may you not die. And may your men and women, children, sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, may they never be few. May they multiply like the Hebrew people in Egypt. May people be saved in times like this. As they are trying to use everything that is going on to crush the people of faith. To stop you from believing that there is God. May God use this moment to fill up his sanctuaries with new believers with new people of faith. Let the revival begin. Let the revival begin. And Lord, let God be magnified. I pray over you today. May Jehovah shine his light upon you. May the mercies that even worked for Cain, who was a murderer, may that mercy be shown to you also. May God preserve your soul and may the devil never find it. If you will live, you will live by power. If you will survive, you will survive by power. If you will thrive, you will thrive by power. If it must be, it must be by power. If it will be, it will be by power. If you will get healed, you will be healed by power. If you will get restored, you will be restored by power. If you will be revived, you will be revived by power. 
be healed, be restored, be delivered. In the mighty name of Jesus. The same God that did it for you in 2020. The same God did it for you in 2021. Now we are in 2022. He will do it again. And as I said, it's not going to stop now. We have almost a year and a half. The Lord has revealed something to me. I will share it with you as I seek clarification from the Spirit. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please share the broadcast and be a blessing to somebody. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for staying with me. Know that somebody is praying for you. You will not lose your strength. You will not lose your, your mind. We will go through together. And we will grow through together. When we come out, it will be full of praise. Testimonies. We will rejoice. The shout of joy will never leave our, our tent and our household. Praise be to God. God bless you. Thank you for watching. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. 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 Stay in prayer and let the Lord always speak to your heart. Stay in prayer day and night. Begin to build your prayer life and watch what he will do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Bye-bye. See you again next Wednesday. May God give you the grace to go through and grow through. May God give you another grace of seven days so we will talk to each other again. Amen. Bye-bye.